What is going on, everybody? Um, this video is going to be a little bit different. Could be very, very helpful. Probably going to be very, very long. Um, so basically what the situation is, is there is a house that needs to convey. Um, it's in Louisiana, a long way away from me. But um, it's got a lot of stuff, damages, um, soffit, fascia, the roof, rot sheathing, termites, windows, casings, doors, you name it, this house has probably got it. Um, I've looked through about 10 photos of the property so far, and obviously I'm not in Louisiana, uh, and I don't want to go all the way out to Louisiana to put in bids, so they are going to send me the photos that they have, um, and I'm going to put a set of bids together just based off of experience and knowledge uh, and kind of what I understand about certain things plus you know I can use a little bit from a lot of different jobs in the past kind of to piece it together and, and give my opinion without being able to see everything on site now is it high risk yes it's very high risk because after I do this I hold the liability for it but the goal is is you make sure that it's worth it so if you run into anything um if you missed anything, then there's enough dollars somewhere else to cover, you know, basically to where you should be fine, really, regardless. It's not a very big house, fortunately. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to skim through the pictures. I'm just going to start at picture one, and I'm going to start building a repair base. Um, this is going to be long format, so you can skip around if you want to skip around. You're going to have to hear me clear my throat, and somebody could walk in my office. My phone might ring. I don't know. Um, I'm not really going to edit it. It just it is what it is. This is real time. This is real life, and that's just the way that I do this stuff. So let me – this is the house, um, and let me get repair base open. And it has actually been a long time since I have been in repair base, so uh, this could be it, since me personally, anyways, have been in repair base. So go down through here, pick one. So it may take me a little bit, anyways, to get warmed up. So just bear with me if I start out and it's kind of I'm fumbling around and it's a little cumbersome at first, then don't judge me too hard all right we got that up all right here are the photos How do I... Float on top. all right so here are the photos we are gonna scroll over to the beginning okay so, my guess is this is a 32 by 80 inch door. Uh, the price difference that you get in repair base for it being a 36 by 80 is not all that drastic. Likewise, if it were 78, so you're not really going to shoot yourself in the foot too much if we missed the mark on this one, but the door certainly does need to be replaced. Um, that's... 4 16 p.m. 5 19 p.m. so clearly this is the front side of this door so they took this picture first and then they went around and opened the door and took this picture it's kind of my interpretation of this because if you look in the back you can see the other door and it's got the kitchen countertop to the right of it uh, which is that so that and this is the same door. It's just this picture was taken after this picture. So we're going to say 32 by 80. Um, and so here's the thing. This house is eat up with termite damage. So we know that the these all of these windows and doors, all the king studs, corner studs, headers, cripples, everything is going to be ate up with termites. The thing about termites is they come in like they're attracted to moisture. So every one of these doors that isn't sealed, you know, perfectly, the windows where they've not been recalked, um, you know, and and so what happens is the HVACs running, 
and it's creating a suction on the interior of the house. So any one of these um, windows or doors that have any kind of cracks or leaks in them, it's pulling that hot, moist air from outside in, and it's getting with the cold air, and it's condensing, and it's just creating moisture. So you get moisture around, you know, doors and windows, and if you don't have termite control down here in the south, you are going to get termites, and this house is just ate up with them. So let's just go back here to repair base, and we're gonna we're gonna bid um, door. Now I'm not gonna we're gonna if we're gonna do a door, we're gonna do remove exterior door singles. Normally the way that I do this is <clears throat> I'll do remove front exterior door rusted and structurally compromised casing damaged from termite. So you kind of want to be descriptive. You obviously don't want to write a um, a paragraph here but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cuz I know I'm gonna have to come back in here and do the replace line item so we're just gonna copy that add it replace replace exterior door single good I always normally try to go with better and the reason I do I never go with best obviously but I go with better because you just never know what kind of options you're gonna have when it's time to buy one um, and door only we definitely don't want to do this one because this is the door only we want to make sure that it includes the jam and really this pricing right here reflects the casing so it says jam what it actually means is the jam and the casing or at least that's the way that i um in my verbiage kind of identifies doors the jam being the actual jam where your um bolt holes are and then the casing being the entire casing so but this one, the, the price reflects it being the entire casing, so we're just gonna change that to replace. All right, and that's our front door. Now, this thing is not really doing what I want it to do here. But y'all don't need to really see me, so that's not all that important. But what I am going to do is I'm going to write down I'm going to write this stuff down I think as I go. So that's the door and the casing. So the thing is, before I commit to any of this, I want to make sure to go and look at some of the attic pictures because I see water damage on, you know, pretty much all this fascia. A lot of the soffit, vinyl soffit is hanging down and um, that aluminum fascia covers missing right there and I just wonder what kind of situation we're looking at there and a lot of that you can tell if you can get if there's attic here we go and see the rafter tails looked okay roof definitely needs replaced. See, that's a lot of the reason that that fascia looks the way it does. See, and I think a lot of the problems with this door, so this is the front door, so clearly they relocated everything and took the plastic off. This is 602, so that's what that is, because that's that same door that we've already bid. And see, there's the other door, and that's the secondary door because that's where the lock box is. So, all right.
So basically, they've had quite a few people come out here and look at this, and none, none, none of them wanted to fool with it. And it's because of this right here, but really, I mean, this is bad, but I can promise you, I would bet my bottom dollar that the termites are isolated to around these windows. I would just, you see, and, and right here, I mean, it's hard to tell in these pictures, but that looks more like water damage to me. That does, I mean, I'm sure it's a combination of the two, but all of that, and see, that's just behind the washer hookup. So, I mean, I would be willing to bet that the sheathing around the entire house doesn't look like that. Yeah, and you see, so here's the, if we can get to the attic, that'll really be the tail of the tape, in my opinion. Yeah. So. So this is my point, you know, with the, the termites being around the window headers, the window casings, the door casings. Um, and just in my experience, that's kind of what I've always noticed. They tend to be, there's just so much wood right there for them to eat on. Like, I think they'd have to be in the house for just an extraordinary amount of time for them to, to eat through everything around, you know, all, all of the amount of wood that is involved in casing in a door or a window and then move on throughout the rest of the house because I mean you can clearly see there's no termite damage anywhere else and um, I did not take these photos just to be clear So the door looks like that because there's no gutter. So that rust from that door is because water's coming off of the roof and it's hitting this concrete and it's splashing back up on the door, which is funny because the sidewalk and the front door is not actually aligned with each other. That um, would not do my OCD too well. So we have one, two, three windows on the front. That's front. We got anything on the back. I know I'm not plugging in a lot of line items right now. I'm actually just kind of assessing the situation. So here's the back of the house. So we've got a large window. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine windows. Let me write that down. two doors <clears throat> All right. this carport right here needs to go rather than trying to fix it and repair it I think it's life expectancy is and see because we're gonna have to replace all of this fascia which is the carport's going to be in the way, so I mean, it's going to have to come down anyway. So we can go ahead and bid to demo that. So we're going to come over here and pull it up on Google Earth here. And we'll get our dimension. So we got 12 foot by 20 foot. So let's go back to repair base. Find the demo line item. Um, outbuilding up to 400 square foot so let's see demo exterior car port left side of home Oh man, I didn't even get close. 
close. Put the D in there. I wrote dilapidated. Excuse my spelling, folks. <clears throat> dilapidated and in way of fascia repair. Good job, Josh. Two hundred and forty square foot. Alright. So then that has the carport. So we're gonna go back here and the thing is is this house I'm not See, the other jam up is, is we really need to pull up the, figure out the plat. So this is the neighboring house. So if you, you can't see, but right here is the house we're looking at. And like these are, so the big thing is, is we just need to make sure that all of this is separate. Which I mean, I'm certain it is. Surely it is. I'd be willing to bet all of this goes with this house. Let me look. I have the app on my phone and I can pull it up and I can look and just check the um, <clears throat> how many acres the plat is. And the only reason that I'm even checking this is because of the debris. Clear Meadow Road, Minden, Louisiana. Yeah. Okay. So now we know. So basically, this got the property for this house right here goes like from here all the way down to here. So it's like a big square here but it doesn't include any of that <clears throat> so that's good so now we know as far as these debris debris it doesn't include anything on that side of that fence So we're going to call the debris 60 exterior, 40 interior for an even 100. And we'll go ahead and put that in here. And for the debris you have, you can use the HUD allowable, which is here. So that covers our debris. And I mean, you can see this stuff is pretty time consuming. So, yeah, because we've not even got, but we can go, let's go ahead and do the roof. So, it's a hip roof. Probably a 
six on twelve. So here's a good way you can do these. Um, if you're doing, if you're trying to bid a route, I like to use Google Earth a lot. Um, you can use Eagle View. I think for twenty bucks, you can you can get the dimensions. You can use Google Earth, um, and and get really close, especially for ordering your materials. So forty five times thirty five. <clears throat> Fifteen seventy five six on twelve. Especially if you can look and see your roof pitch. So roughly, I you know it's six on twelve. Calculate. We'll see. It's nineteen hundred sixty one square foot, which sounds about right. And then you come back over here to Google Earth, and you can measure your ridge, which is important. So you know how much ridge vent to get. Um, this is going to be 15 foot, 15 foot ridge. And then on your hips, all four of these hips are the same. And I know this is a straight measurement that doesn't include this. So, but you know it's 20 foot. So I would just round up probably 23 foot. So then I would do 23 foot times four. So 92 foot of hip. Um, and it's important because when you're getting your hip and ridge cap, uh, you need to know how much. And then also when you get your ridge vent, you need to know how much. So we can go back to repair base. We can go to roofing and asphalt shingles. Remove single layer asphalt shingles. Square foot, 1961. Remove 1,961 square foot of shingles and felt in preparation of replacement. Oh boy. Good one, Josh. And then replace. Now, I always go with dimensional um, because we're not going to replace three tab unless it's like a repair. But if we're tearing it off and completely replacing it, we're going to go back with dimensional. Plus, I think this specific zone in Louisiana requires dimensional. I'm not sure. Uh, I know a lot of the Panhandle of Florida has moved to that. So we're going to go right here, 1961. Let's see. Replace. Um, 1961 square foot of shingles on house current shingles leaking in several areas well past life Span when damaged, which I'm sure they can get an insurance claim just given its location and it was obvious wind damage. So add estimate. Alright. And then let's see here. Ridge bent. Alright, first twenty foot. We know we're only gonna have fifteen foot install. Fifteen foot ridge bent during replacement then ridge cap and the ridge cap we're going to have 115 so replace 115 linear foot of hip and ridge cap during roof replacement. Look, I've seen a lot of people um, include their starter shingles. I don't because when you do, it makes the price so high that it's, you know, 
a little over the top in my opinion. So that's pretty much what I go for. And then also I add in my boots, which you can get from either your pictures or your or Google Earth. But you don't got any good Google Earth ones here. So we've got one. We're going to remove all that crap. This one... We'll just reuse. It's perfectly fine. I just think it's one. Another thing. That should at least be two. I just don't think you can see the other one. So we'll just add in two vent jacks. So we call them boots down here, but Repair Base calls them jacks. So we're just going to go with jacks. And then the other thing is drip edge. And when we pulled our dimensions, it was 45 and 35. So 90, so 160. Not the best typer in the world, so y'all just have to bear with me. What is it? Oh, I never did put that pan back in the other side, did I? Oh, put the nail through there. You gonna move all the firewood stuff down to the other building? <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead and move all that stuff down that other building. I mean, all that stuff down there to the other building? Yeah. All everything that's not been split, move down there. Move the tent down there. Put the tent directly beside it. Make sure them yellow jackets are gone. They should be. But put the tent directly beside that building. The last time I checked, they were And then, uh, but don't put them on the yellow jacket side. Put them on the other side of it. Just move all the unsplit wood. Get all the wood out of that pile that just got dumped right there. And um, you can take that saw right there and cut all the um, foliage off of it down to just the logs and tote them down there. Is it? Run up there and get some diesel fuel. Get some mixed gas too. And some, uh, or get some gas and then get some mixed oil. Sorry about that. <coughs> All right. So good. We are good on the roof. What in the world is going on right here? Nail. Nail. Why is there a nail and a nail right there? Hmm. So we got rid of the carport. We got the roof done. So let's get, we got the debris on there. So we're getting a lot of the easy crap out of the way. So we're going to skim back through. Let's do the fascia. So everywhere that is covered by the fascia cover, I think it's probably going to be fine if I had to bet my bottom dollar. Just judging off the roof, it looked like the shingles had to overhang all except for in a couple of different spots. So when I did this fascia, 
think I'm going to do 8 foot there. The carport was 20 foot, so that's 28 foot. And then everywhere it's damaged, um, I'm going to do 8 foot. I got a phone call. Hang on. Hello? Hey. Hey. Um, I'll read you the measurements at that Cusada for that the fence in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it okay if I just go ahead and send it? It was eight foot linear feet. So one panel? Huh? So one panel? I mean, I I yeah. I what about what about the po what about the post on each side? Um, let me see. I think it might need the post, so that'd be two posts, right? Yeah, set in concrete, eight foot. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Love you, bye. Yeah, so I think the overhang's probably gonna be good everywhere. So I mean, we're at 28 foot plus another eight, so we're just gonna do a flat 40 um, on the fascia. Where in the hell was the fascia? I think it's in the roof and stuff. No, it's gonna be in the framing. So this is what I'm talking about. It has been a minute since I've dabbled in this stuff so I don't rem really remember where every dang thing's at yeah okay up to 8 inch um, so we need to remove it first so Fascia board demo. So I said 40. All right, 40. Remove 40 linear foot of rotten fascia surrounding home. Okay. And replace. Hello? Hey. Hey. Did uh, Nick call you? He did. Okay, I just wanted to make sure before I accepted all this that you were good with it. Yeah, see if Luke wants to do it. If he don't, we'll go down there and do it. Okay, I'll call and ask him and I'll let you know what he says. Let him know it's got to be done like to the T though. Okay, I will. Alright, bye. Alright, bye. 40 linear foot of... Fascia, foot of rotten fascia surrounding home. So that covers us on the fascia. So let's skim through and see. So here is one of the interesting things. <clears throat> when we take that carport down, I think most of the soffit is going to be re reattached. Like all that's going to be reattached. Um, we're going to have to get this aluminum fascia cover because that's where the lip that holds this soffit in is. So we're going to have to replace that. But, yeah, for sure. So we're going to call that 40. And I don't think Repair Base has a line item for that. So we'll just eat that cost during the fascia replacement but I need to check I, what, I, what I'm looking at here is to make sure that there's not any soffit missing anywhere and it's just strictly reattached nope it's missing so I'm going to be up
Okay. <clears throat> so we are going to replace soffit up to 24 inch. So replace 10 foot of missing soffit left. Let's see. I think it was missing rear corner of home. The thing is, I, don't, I couldn't really, I think it's the left rear or the right rear actually, but I don't want to confuse anybody when they get out there to do this, so I'm just going to let them find it. And then we also need to repair siding, no, replace. Ain't got no freeze boards. So what I'll do in this, so the way that I because I don't see a reattached soffit, even though I know there is one. Maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. So what I'll do is I'll just put go to the replace line soffit line item and um, put what did I say? We'll do thirty. Because 10 minus 40, and we'll just do re we'll, we'll actually write reattach. So reattach 30 linear foot of falling soffit surrounding home. Right. But the other thing that we need to do is our rafter tails. So the rafter tails, let's just say they're 16 inches. They're on 16 inch centers. And they're 18 inches, so a foot and a half. So we just need to come up with our math. So if we're doing 40 foot of fascia, everywhere that we do fascia, there's most likely going to be rotten. So 40 times 12 is 480 inches. 480 inches divided by 16 equals 30. So there's going to be 30 times 30, one and one half foot rafter tails. Okay, so now we are going to go back to where we were, which is framing. And then let's see. No, roof. Hmm. I definitely thought it was in the framing. Roof, here we go, all right. Remove, and those were Two by six is what those rafter tails were. So remove, and it won't square foot. So square foot. So 30 times 1.5 equals 20. So 20. Remove 20. Square foot of rotten rafter tails.
keep forgetting to type that E. And then we'll just do the replace line item, like I said. Change that to replace. All right. So that has got us the roof. Here's the other door. But you see, this one's going to be termite damage too. So what did I bid the first one at? 32 by 80? What did I did the first one. All right, so we're going to do the secondary door here. Actually, turn the edit. We can, we'll just edit this one. To two, remove front and side exterior door. So we'll change that to, okay. Same thing, edit this one. Replace front and side. Let me change the quantity to two. And the reason is, is because we know they both have termite damage. Um, and so if there's termites, then most certainly the casing's gonna have to be replaced. Um, and we do know that there's termite damages on both front and side door based off of the pictures. So that saves us from having to rebid that. See, when you replace two, um, which, I mean, it looks like the trim's it's so hard to tell in pictures. No, the trim's still on there. See, all of this trim when we replace this door is going to have to come off. So if you're, like, digging deep, you can bid the linear foot of this trim. When I'm doing, like, a massive one that I already know is going to be, a, like, a big, big number that I want to get approved, I leave a lot of this little stuff off because I don't want the number to get so high up there that it's an obnoxious amount of money that they just is they're gonna gawk at. So um I'm just gonna look through these pictures, make sure I have everything on the outside and I don't I don't know, I'm pretty sure pretty sure that tree needs to be trimmed. So, let's go back over here. Landscaping. Trees. Trim, 48 inch diameter, large oak tree right front of home, touching roof, fascia. I think we got the raptor tail situation under control.
So I'm going to show you guys basically the easiest way. All right. So here is a jam up. So there's going to be a where this door is cased in. There's going to be a header here. Um, stud, stud, stud stacked up right here and this switch is going to be mounted to this side so probably three two by fours right here they're going to be eat to pieces and but the cabinets unless i'm seeing this wrong which i don't think that i am the cabinets are gonna they're going straight to the corner of this door so these cabinets right here are gonna have to be removed all right because we're gonna have to take um this rock out, that rock out, the rock on the other side of the door out to assess this door casing. And likewise with this window. So in these houses will not convey, like if this is here and we take this out, it's gotta go back, okay? So we're definitely gonna have to remove probably 10 foot you know, something like 20 foot of cabinets, same thing. Um, but I think that we can reattach these same cabinets. So I think that we can just remove them, relocate them out of the way, do what we got to do, put all our rock back, frame back in these doors. Um, and then the windows, I can't tell... And we're just going to replace all the windows. Because Home Depot carries 30, 30 by 74, 30 by 70, 32 by 74, all this. So these are all, this one to for sure, this one to for sure we can get from Home Depot. This one is questionable. But then if we end up having to reuse one, if it's not like, like, obviously, I've never been there, so I'm going to bid this as if all these have to be replaced. But, you know, if the window's fine, which I highly doubt it is, if it's a wood window. Um, but if if the window's fine, we could reuse it if we had to. But like I said, it's not going to be. It's definitely not going to be. I take back. But maybe that window... I mean, you just never know. God, these pictures are not great. Yeah, the windows are definitely no good. Mm -mm. Now the windows that they will be, we'll be able to reuse them. Yes, we will. Thank God. Let's make sure we have all our windows. That one's going to have to be replaced. Good, 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 good.
sorry, I've just been trying to think on the best way to break this thing down. 40. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all, for sure, I'm going to remove all of the paneling from the exterior walls. <laughs> oh my God. Interior, exterior walls to allow access to window door framing wall studs. Top and bottom plate and corner studs. And we're going to have to replace this at some point. So we will go ahead and put this in here. These are most likely going to be two by tens. Alright, so how many windows did I say there was? One, two, that's three, plus three, six, plus, so, eight, ten total, including the doors. Three foot, so thirty. Rem 
remove 30 linear foot of headers throughout all doors and windows in home where termite damage. So we're going to copy that and then we're going to go down here to replace Wasn't that there were some binds on one of them corners? Let me go ahead and add them binds before I forget. So all of your plate covers, all that type of stuff you can do. Um, obviously your window trim, your door trim, everything that you have to take down, your baseboard. So we're gonna do a lot of that. Um, Actually, what we're going to do, let me see. Base, boards, trim. Let me get these daggum little binds because I'm going to forget about them. Remove. Remove 10 linear foot lines from exterior of home. Okay. All right, I'll be right back. Two minutes. Okay, so we're going to replace one window, and we're going to remove and reattach one, so seven. We got the vine, so let's go ahead and um, let's do our trim. Remove baseboards. 
So let's see, it was 180. So we're just going to go with 150. Remove 150 linear foot of baseboards. Place up to three and a half per linear foot. But we're gonna do this one. 150. Replace 150 linear foot of baseboards throughout home after all termite restoration is complete. trim around the door. No crown mode. Door trim. Three and a half. So we've got six foot, nine foot, eighteen. Place 90 linear foot of door and window trim door and window. Trim after all termite restoration complete. All right, so we've got the paneling going back, trim going back, baseboard going back, doors going back. We need to get over here to the windows. Okay, so single hung windows. See, I don't like this. We're going to call it eight. Let's see. Remove times eight windows throughout home to allow access to. Let's see. King studs headers. Hey, where are you at? You at the house? Yeah. How's it going? You send me the pictures. When do you need the Escalada? Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, I, I this okay. All right. Bye. Okay. per unit, $200. All right, and then we do gotta replace one 
and it is going to be six foot by three foot so 18 so we'll go up to right here just to cover our butts replace we'll do uh, 70 inch by 30 inch window where damaged and irreparable gosh I was I was close enough for spell check to get it all right that covers us on the window all right then we gotta remove Flipping cabinets. All right, remove, tear out existing cabinets, demolition only. Linear foot, so let's see. Remove kitchen cabinets. God, Josh. Against walls. Top and bottom to gain access to paneling to move and to allow for termite restoration. place the sink will, the actual sink will reuse so I'm not gonna bid to replace it um, it's stainless steel so it'll be perfectly fine replace 30 linear foot re I think we're going to reuse the cabinets. Just because they seem pretty good in the pictures. So let's see. Reattach kitchen cabinets after all termite restoration work complete. Cabinets are definitely good. Service panel cover. What we want to do on the um, framing in the house is we want an add a line item with a X amount of square footage in there just to cover us for any studs that we have to replace.
we've got to be getting close here. They boarded with OSB. You should never do that. Kilts. Let's see. And we'll do two hundred. My wash up to two hundred square foot of moldy <clears throat> drywall throughout. I did see a little bit, and obviously I don't have a measurement, so we'll just do 200 square foot that'll cover us, and then kilts. And then I seen some dang, those little stick-on tiles somewhere that were like falling down in one of the, yeah, all right, here we go. See, all this just looks like nothing. But we'd probably go ahead and remove those. So we're gonna say 10 foot by 20, so 200 square foot. see what we're up to here a bunch so some of that something somewhere is going to be obnoxious and it's going to be that right there so when you're doing this much work you go through and start editing some of these because like I said I have an idea of what it would cost and uh I want it to be, I want my number to kind of be around that because I want to get the job, so I don't want it to just be something, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know why on God's green earth Ridge Cap comes out to be so expensive in this, but this is, I got to figure out my price on Ridge Hey, hey, what is the price per foot on ridge cap I give you? Uh, hold on. $13 per linear feet. All right, thank you. You're welcome.
that's better. Well, that is it. That's about how you. That's kind of where I needed it, to, or would have wanted it to be. Um, so I created my repair base, and then I just kind of went back in there and edited some of the line items that I thought were too high um, to get it down to about where I wanted it to be. And then, let's see, termite LA. And this is it. It's the finished product. I don't know how long this took. I know I was gone doing some other stuff, but um, you know, as I said, I will edit out one part. Uh, so it'll have what edited there anyway, but. If you stayed this whole time, hopefully you learned something. It's, it's, um, I hate being inside this office, just a little FYI. So I know I look 10 times more tired now than I did when I got started, but this kind of stuff just exhausts me being in here. I like being out doing stuff. So, but anyways, that's how you look through pictures and just, um, use experience and, and, um, you know, kind of, and a little bit of information that you know about the house with the pictures and you just, put together a pretty safe I know for this right here we could just about go in there and do everything that we have to do um, so I'm happy with the price I think it's a fair price for them it's a good price for me so that's it see ya